Hey guys, what's up? The Inksmith back again with another new video today talking about the artwork and story of a little known horror visual novel known as Saya no Uta or The Song of Saya in English. This has been out for quite some time. I believe it came all the way out in 2000. 5 2003 maybe but wasn't translated till about 2009 for america it's since gone into different translations there was a fan translation which apparently is quite a bit better and it was uploaded to steam but apparently steam had censored quite a bit of it and it had to be patched up and made back to its original uncensored version via all sorts of DLC and then finally I believe re-released one last time with everything included and the fan translation. So I think now it's a pretty fine purchase. Anyway, Saya no Uta. This is a really out there story and has been inspiration for me myself as far as my own sort of delve into horror and body horror. It starts out with our main character, Fumi Nori, and right from go, the game opens up with this very unsettling scene of you being in a cafe with your friends after you had just recently recovered from a horrible car accident that while your body is intact and you look fully functional, inside you are not fully functional. Your brain, your senses, your eyesight, your smelling, your hearing, everything about you has been twisted in some way. Um, there is an actual name for this disease where people can't recognize everyday objects and it's usually also compared to what it's like to have a stroke where you'll start to look at objects and not realize what they are. Some people say things like they were at work and looking at a calendar and then suddenly it just became this abstract thing of boxes floating in front of them. But in this case, it's far worse. Everything has become fleshy, meat-shaped blobs. Smells have become a stench of decay and rot. And everything around Fuminori is just the most disgusting it could possibly be. Even when his friends try to speak to him, and you hear this from the beginning of the opening dialogue, it sounds like if someone tried to talk to you through the radio of Silent Hill with static overlays and all kinds of background sounds and voices overlapping voices, it's pretty horrifying and this guy has been stuck in this state for three months and there's no recovery cited for him there is no cure in the future the doctors keep trying to treat him and nothing is working so his life is pretty miserable and he's having a lot of problems trying to function in society as you probably would if everything looked like horrific monsters smelled like death and talked like static. Fuminori eventually kind of gives up on having a sort of social life. He disconnects from his friends, his main friends being a girl named Yo, who is a past love interest. Um, his, I guess, psychologist slash doctor slash psychiatrist named Tambo, who is a lady, even though it sounds like it would be a boy's name. Yosuke, who is kind of like his best friend from when he was a little kid up till now and Omi and Koji so this gets a little bit complicated I'll try to do my best explaining how things break down but I want to put it right here that past this point spoilers okay I would say even if you listen to this whole explanation of the plot Playing the game is still very interesting and very exciting, and there's a lot you could still learn. Um, some of the scenes are just so horrifying that I'm not going to be able to do them justice by describing the plot here, so you're not really missing too much as far as detailed descriptions of everything if you just listen to a synopsis. And a lot of the beauty and horror and 
disgusting, disturbing aspects of this game really come in the descriptions. It's not really a heavily graphical game. You've got your random sprites for different characters, changing facial features, and a few sort of very abstract horror scenes. But for the most part, it does everything it does very well with words. And that's probably the scariest part, is that it can create such horrific ideas in your mind that that's how you know it's a great piece of horror. There is also, most people probably don't know this, but a comic book. Um, I believe the comic book was made in Russia, but it has been translated into English. Apparently this game was huge in Russia, so much so that they created their own part two, which I'll talk a little bit about in the end here. So last warning, spoiler alert, here we go. Fuminori is going to try two different paths, and this is a visual novel, so you can follow either one. If he continues down the path of just trying to deal with his sort of messed up view of life and how everything is distorted and grotesque to him, he eventually meets a girl who wanders into his house, I guess you could say. She, she shows up one day, and this is Saya, the name of the game. Saya shows up and she is more or less cherubic. She's angelic. She's like his type of girl pretty much on steroids. She comes across to him as the pure essence of beauty. And he can't believe this beautiful girl has wandered into his house in the middle of this crisis that he's having. At the same time, he begins to start a dialogue with her she's really surprised that he's so attractive to her and that makes you think like well that's weird why why is this girl so surprised by that and why does he want to keep interacting with her and he doesn't see her as a grotesque piece of bubbling meat like all his friends well eventually you start to realize saya is not a human now i've heard some people cop the the whole take that this game's disgusting because she looks too young or she's childlike in her appearance. She's not even human, so... And we're not talking about like, oh, she's a thousand-year-old vampire. Like, when you see her true form, she's not even close to human. She's literally a bubbling pile of flesh with tentacles and eyeballs. And because that's what her natural form is, Fuminori has reversed imaged it into his head as something that is the most beautiful thing he's ever seen. And this is where the real gist of the story starts to begin. This is where the real, no pun intended, meat of the story starts to begin and what Fuminori will do to keep this relationship going. So right away, he starts to become more and more reclusive, almost hikikomori in the aspect of staying at his house at all hours, painting over the windows, blacking out the sun, and it's more or less because him and Saya want to create this sort of world for both of them to live in. And she enjoys living in a world of this meat and flesh and disgusting. And to our main MC, he sees this meat and flesh and disgusting rot as just normal because his entire, once again, view and perception is flipped. Everything that's grotesque and wretched for a human to look at he sees as nice now and vice versa so as she starts to coat the entire inside of their apartment with things like dead animals like small things she's eating on the street carrion rotting meat she literally paints their apartment with this so yeah you can tell this is going to start to get pretty gross and this is just the tip of the iceberg Eventually, Fuminori, his friends start to worry about him, and also his sort of ex-love interest, Yo, tries to reconnect with him. At one point, she kind of corners him and says, like, look, you know, before you got into your really bad accident, you and I had a thing, and I was going to ask you, you know, to get more serious, and we date as a steady couple. Well, Fuminori, I guess, sadly, or maybe in his mind, happily kind of attacks her verbally with trying to scare her away as much as possible. And there's kind of two reasons behind this. 
number one, his whole view of everything is twisted. Like even when she's talking to him, you can see as the reader that she's quite a beautiful girl, but he sees her as still this shambling mass of mouths and eyes and tentacles. And he knows this isn't going to be reversed, that there is no cure for this. So he shoves her away and says, you're disgusting. I'll never want to talk to you again. I hate you. And after he does this, you know, she runs off crying. Her feelings are hurt like anyone would be being told horrible things like that. She goes back to her friends, Omi and Koji. Both of them are really pissed off um, at Fuminori and are wondering why he's acting like this. So we get deeper into the plot and what happens is Omi, Yo's friend, goes over to Fuminori's house to kind of confront him because his ex was also her GF and she's interested in finding out what this sudden change of mind is with Fuminori. Why does he suddenly want to yell at the girl that loved him so much and treat her so badly? Omi goes over to Fuminori's house and is devoured by Saya. She literally walks in, goes crazy at what she sees, and has her entire body ripped apart by Saya, and Saya begins to eat her. Yeah, wow, you didn't think we were going there, huh? Um, after which, Koji is like, uh, yo, where's my babe? Where's my boo? Where'd she go? So he starts to become a bit of an investigator, and you start to follow his story a bit. Um, and as he does start to do that, as he does start to investigate that, then you start to get even into some of the neighborhood of where Fuminori lives and how he's starting to look stranger and stranger to everyone because his whole house is covered in weird colored paints. You know, it has a horrible rotting smell. The windows are blacked out. He never comes out anymore. And his next door neighbor, uh, Yosuke, who's this sort of, uh, I guess you'd say like 50 year old artist who works from home, uh, starts to notice this too. And when Koji tries to start investigating where um, Yo uh, Omi went last, where she went, it, it was to Fuminori's house. I hope I'm not getting this too jumbled up so you can understand. Omi went to Fuminori's house to confront him about how he treated Yo. Koji follows her trail because that's where it leads him, obviously. That was the last place she was seen before she was torn apart by Saya. And the next door neighbor, Yosuke, comes over and says, yeah, man, that guy has been acting weird. He never comes out of his house anymore. He seems like he's talking to someone in there, but we don't know who because it's just him living by himself. Maybe living by himself is driving him crazy. Um, so Koji, having been a longtime friend of Fuminori, says, you know what, I'm, I'm kind of pushing into his business too much. I'm going to get out of here. But Yosuke, being kind of the elderly Japanese man that he is, and I say 50 is elderly. He's actually he's probably older than 50. The way they draw him in the comic is probably... I want to say maybe, maybe early 70s, I should say that. He goes over there to try and start talking to Fuminori and maybe get him out of his dark space that he's in, get him out of this bad mindset because he says, you know, I'm an artist and I understand getting stuck in depression and not being able to get out. I did that in my own art career before, so maybe I can talk to this guy. Maybe I can bust him out of his shell. This does not go well. <laughs> this goes horrible. Um, as he walks in there, Fuminori's not even home. Um, I believe he's actually at school at the time because he's still attending medical school. And the only person in there is Saya. And Saya immediately tries to defuse the situation by saying, look, you got to leave. But guess what? Saya's voice to normal people sounds like that disgusting, weird Silent Hill static. So he can't even understand what she's saying. And to defend herself, she starts wrapping tentacles around him to halt his presence in the house. These tentacles eventually start to feed into like his nerves and his mind and his brain, and they more or less drive him totally nuts, like totally, totally insane, like worse off than even Fuminori was. Like the world around him becomes this violent mess that Fuminori suffers from too. So he goes running, screaming from the house, goes back to his own house, and ends up murdering his own family because now to him, they look the same way everything does to Fuminori, like disgusting, weird, blobby monsters. And his mind just can't even handle it. He breaks. He kills his daughter. He kills his wife. And now his whole house is 
messed beyond all belief. He goes back and realizes what he's done, tries to go kill Saya, and she has to kill him. Finally, when Fuminori comes home, he realizes he's got two houses full of dead people. So they pretty much have a choice at this point. Um, you know, Saya fully explains to Fuminori a bit of her past. She used to hang out and live below the sort of, I guess, sewer system or underground system of the same hospital that he goes to school for. It's like a college hospital, an institute, if you will. And she was taught how to live and not to come out by her father, whose name was Ogai. And they don't, they kind of keep this nebulous that Ogai was a doctor, but he was also the father of this creature. And we don't understand if Ogai was able to switch between forms or if he was totally human and found this alien presence and nurtured it because he wanted to experiment on it. But Ogai's gone missing since then. And because he went missing, she left the hospital and decided to follow Fuminori home one day because she knew he saw everything as grotesque. Um, her level of scientific understanding and like molecular breakdown of the universe is like far beyond anything we understand as humans. Um, although she acts childlike and innocent in the presence of Fuminori, her mind is actually like on a Cthulhu level of cosmic horrors. Like she could twist and break down anything in the galaxy that she wanted to. So she finally says to him, she says, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm smart enough to be able to fix your mind, and I could turn you back to normal where you see the world as normal. Or you can continue to live this crazy life with me. You need to make a choice. So this is one of the biggest decisions, not the first decision you make in the graphic novel, but one of the first decisions you can make. And if you say, I want my mind fixed, um, it's a pretty sad ending. Fuminori ends up getting locked up in an asylum. They find the dead bodies in the house and they blame him for going crazy and killing everyone because he had this mind disease. And he sits there saying he will wait around until one day that um, Saya will show up again. And she does show up again one day behind the door of the asylum he's at. But it's just like as this mass, as a tentacle, meaty, gibbering mass, who pushes a note under the door and says like, I love you, but we can never see each other again. It's, it's a pretty depressing ending. And he just ends up going crazy and living the rest of his existence in this asylum, saying, don't worry, I'll still wait forever, Saya. But at this point, most people are going to choose, you know, my mind's broken, my world is broken, I've committed crimes at this point by having people murdered around me. Um, you know, I'm containing dead bodies at my house and not telling the police. Might as well, you know, go full crazy with this game. So that's what you choose to do, and yeah, things just get darker and darker. Um, the one character I spoke about earlier, Tombo, who is a doctor that works at the institute slash hospital college that Fuminori attends is also uh, a psychiatrist who sees him and she starts to catch on that since that doctor Ogai has left the creature that he was looking after also left and that she starts to realize this creature has some sort of mental presence over the whole of Fuminori because she starts trailing him as he goes home because the things he's describing are getting weirder and weirder and he's not telling her enough and he seems to be hiding secrets and she finally realizes that he's housing this sort of alien presence at his house. Uh, meanwhile Koji also starts to realize this you know he realizes that his next door neighbor has been killed his girlfriend is missing and also at some point again Yochan even tries to go back and rekindle her love even though she was told to her face that he hates her and he tried to push her away as much as she could and she actually gets her story goes horribly wrong she doesn't get torn apart and killed like everyone else which would have actually been a, a better fate than what really happens because she becomes like twisted and mind controlled to become sort of a sex slave for both Saya and Fuminori and by the time Koji and Tambo show up they see what a disgusting world everything's become within Fuminori's house it's covered in flesh and dead bodies and rancid animals and rotting meat and it's it, 
it's almost like, you know, the cave of a xenomorph from the movie Aliens, where there's people, you know, halfway in the walls ripped apart. Um, it's flesh tunnels. I, I don't know how else to explain this. I'm sure you can see it within the artwork of, you know, some of the visuals I'm showing now. And the final confrontation either ends with uh, either Fuminori getting killed or Saya getting killed or Tombo and Koji getting killed. The best ending is obviously Koji and Tombo getting killed and Fuminori and Saya get to live out their life together, but it is not a happy life that they get to live out because Saya is pregnant. You've been intimate with her this whole time in those scenes. I just didn't even go over them because I, I don't feel like my channel is the right channel to be going over stuff like that. I like horror and violence, but I don't want to get into the whole etchy aspect of Goro Echi and stuff like that. It, it gets pretty gross. Um, and because she's pregnant, this is actually going to kill her. Um, the reason it's going to kill her is because the way she reproduces is her body bursts open into spores. And the whole game ends on a very nihilistic note where um, Saya bursts into spores, covers the entire world in her, I don't know, what would you call it, meat babies? <laughs> How do I explain such a nebulous creature um, in her cosmic horror? And everyone on Earth is turned into these weird meat things. Um, Yochan is turned into a disgusting meat slave person thing. And even Fuminori joins the ranks of these meat people aliens xenomorphs whatever they are i don't know they don't really ever give like a physical name to this type of alien that she is um and that's where our story kind of ends or does it um there is a little known fact that actually in russia they made saya no uta 2 derangement i have yet to play this game i have yet to read through it i would love to but Everything I look up, I can't find any sort of English translation. I don't speak any Russian, I'm sorry. Um, but if at some point that comes out, maybe I'll make another video following up with this because I just feel like this series is so amazing. There's so many amazing things about this. You know, some people complain about there looks like there's an age gap between the main MC and his girlfriend but i mean once again she's a cosmic horror alien she's not human at all in this world some people complain about that they rush the horror plot but there's quite a bit that has to happen for this whole thing to play out so i'm not really that surprised some people complain that some of the acting is cheesy but it's it's b horror like you know it's b rate horror like what well, you know uh, maybe I, the only game I can think of or visual novel I can think of that has excellent horror and very slow and creepy storytelling is you know Higurashi when they cry and yeah this is not Higurashi when they, they cry this is like a, a splatter punk novel okay this is the gory stuff um, would I recommend this yeah but I you do need to have a pretty strong will towards horror and um, some very triggering aspects that can happen with this game so it's really it's up to you what your tastes are as far as horror are if you're not too turned off by the extreme horror japan has sometimes i think this game is definitely for you um where will the story go in part two and sayano uta 2 derangement i don't know but what i heard was that it takes place after the whole world has been covered in these spores and you continue to play through this new mutated disgusting world so i hope one day i can cover that if anyone ever hears about a translation let me know i would love to see what happens next anyway i hope that gave you a little look into a game or visual novel this is also a comic book too you can find a comic book of it online if you don't feel like playing the game um and uh gives you some inspiration of your own to create your own horror series until next time i've been the inksmith have a great day